Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Allahu akbar Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar Allahu akbar. Ashhad wallahi ila Allah Ashhad Allah Ashhad anna Muhammad Rasulullah Hayya lassalah Hayya alassalah Hayya alal falah Hayya alal falah Allahu akbar Allahu akbar La Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nasta'hdihi wa natubu ilayhi Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyati a'malina Man yahdihi allahu falamudilla lahu wa man yudlil falahadiya lahu Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار نعوذ بالله من النار ومن أحوال أهل النار الحمد لله All praises and thanks are due to Almighty Allah We praise Him, we thank Him, in Him we seek help and forgiveness we seek refuge in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala from the evil within ourselves and our bad deeds. He whom Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala guides, no one can mislead him. And he whom Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala mislead, there is no guide for him. I bear witness and I testify openly that no God worthy of worship but Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. He is alone without partner. I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a servant and messenger of Allah. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, upon his family and his sahaba. We ask Allah wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to have mercy on at-tabi'oon 
everyone who follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sahaba footsteps until the day of judgment. O you who believe, fear Allah as you ought to be feared and die not except in the state of Al-Islam. O humanity, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul and created from that soul its met and has scattered from them both many men and women. And fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual right and do not cut relations with the wombs that bore you. And indeed Allah is Raqib, a watcher over you. O you who believe, fear Allah and say always the truth in order that he may accept from you your deeds and forgive you of your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala <clears throat> and his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has indeed achieved a tremendous achievement. Amma ba'd, the most truthful speech is the book of Allah. And the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil of affairs are newly invented matters in this deen. And every newly invented matters in this deen is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a straying. And every a straying is in a hellfire. We ask Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to save us and our families from the hellfire. <clears throat> our beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, these past two weeks, we spoke about the negative impact of social media networks on Islam and Muslims. We discuss about how media could control our lives by controlling our time, our way of thinking, and our ways to spend money. And I made very, very clear to you that media is one of the powerful voice of shaitan. Media is one of the powerful voice of shaitan to dismantle Islam and Muslims. Not only that, but also to dismantle human beings in general. It is a devastating power. Media is a devastating power for our values and morals in most cases. Media is a devastating power for our values and morals in most cases. Yes, we knew that in the media, there are so many different programs. There are so many different surveys that may be somewhat useful. But we have to be able to identify the useful part of the media. We have to be able to identify the, mis the useful part of the media and take advantage of it and be able to control the negative side of the media in the way or in the manner that it will not harm our religion, our values and principles, in the way that it will never be able to harm our religion, our values and principles, especially in these days, in these days that we call the era of explosion, the era of explosion, explosion of the media through different satellite channels, explosion of the media through so many different satellite channels. We have what we call slang, we have Netflix, we have YouTube, we have HBO, and so on and so forth. So many different satellite channels. <clears throat> after we come to know, or after we come to understand these things, 
that shaitan work with to corrupt communities and societies and hijack human beings, take him away from his main goal on the surface of this earth. After we come to realize that, after we come to understand that, now our task is how we're going to fight it. <clears throat> how are we going to fight back? What is the best way to fight back? What is the best way to maneuver and grab the positive and avoid the negative of the media? What is the best way to do that? Because <clears throat> we cannot keep beating ourselves every single day. We cannot keep blaming ourselves every single day. Because if we keep doing that, and we're not looking for solution, it will become, as they said in Arabic, Udrun Akbahu Minadham. Udrun Akbahu Minadham. An excuse that worse than guilt. So we cannot keep beating ourselves, keep blaming ourselves every single day by saying, we fell short here. We fell short over there. We did not do what we're supposed to do here. We did not do what we're supposed to do over there. We cannot keep being in this way. <clears throat> we have to find the solution for this problem. We have to find solution for this problem. What our du'at are doing, what our sheikhs and imams are doing today is not enough. Is not enough to fight this situation. Khutbas and lectures inside the masajid are not enough to fight back. It's not enough to fight back. Because we are facing what we call today global invasion. Global invasion of our prophecies. Global invasion of our religion. Global invasion of our values and norms. And no one can fight this can fight back this evil by himself. No one can fight back this evil by himself. No entity, no organization, no community that can fight back this evil, that can dominate this evil, except by fighting with the similar means and energy. We have to fight back with the similar means and energy. Meaning that the frequency of using the media in all forms for dawah must, must increase. The frequency of using the media in all forms for the dawah to call people, to guide people, to direct people to the right ways must increase regardless what we see in it. Regardless of what we see in the media and these social media. For example, if you have a Facebook page or you have a YouTube channel or whatever you have, every time you open your Facebook page, you find some good things in it. You find some good things in it. You may find khutbah. You may find lecture. You may find good advice. You may find some very, very beneficial information. When you open you, the YouTube, you may listen to the sheikh talking about tawheed. You may listen to the sheikh, to the imam talking about certain things, or you may listen to some beneficial advice. But what happened? 
right after you finish, listen to that khutbah. Right after you listen to that advice, Facebook will send you another clip. Facebook will send you or YouTube will send you music video or dance club or a woman half naked or someone who is attacking another person, someone who backbiting other people, accusing other group of people, and so on and so forth. So the effect of that khutbah, the barakah of that advice that you get received, you just receive from that particular sheikh when down. The iman that you got from that lecture in your Facebook page or in YouTube right after you listen to other things. Shaitan comes with other things to take out the barakah, the benefit of that khutbah right away. That's why, brothers and sisters, we have to increase our presence. Our presence in those channels. We, we have to <clears throat> be in social media more and more. More and more. As I mentioned, we cannot fight back this evil, except by fighting with the similar means and energy. There is no way that we can fight without that. So we have to be there more with good things. We have to utilize the principle that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa advises. us. Sometimes we read the hadith, we read the ayat, but we do not implement this ahadith and this ayat in our real life. We have to use this principle that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu has given us when he says in this hadith narrated by Abu Dhar, he said, Ittaqillaha haythuma kunta. Fear Allah. Wherever you may be, fear Allah. And then Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us very strong principle. Say, Wa atbi'i sayyi'at al hasana. Follow up. Follow up bad deeds with good ones. So we have to be present in those channels to follow up the bad deeds with good ones to wipe it out. This is the only way we can fight this evil. We have to be more and more involved. Because <coughs> people heard so many things in social media. People see so many things. They hear, they see <coughs> without behaving themselves without behaving themselves, without controlling themselves. Everything is against the call to Allah. Everything in the media. 99% is against the call to Allah. Is Everything is making you, causing you, Iman, to become weak. Everything is causing you to have weak relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we spend so many, so much time in those social, social media. We, we, we spend time that we suppose to be making dhikr. Time that we're supposed to be reading Quran. Time that we're supposed to be memorizing certain things. Seeking beneficial knowledge. We spend all these times in these media channels. And everything is to 
drag you, is to push you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything is to destroy our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now, brothers and sisters, we have to pave the way. We have, we as Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, today, we have a huge responsibility. We have to pave the way for building the media generation. Building the media generation everywhere in every part of the world this is what we're supposed to be doing these days in order to, to fight back this problem we're not there yet but we're asking Allah to help us and guide us so that we can be able to do what we're supposed to do to minimize the situation so many Muslim organizations are doing. So many people are trying their best. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them. So many people are doing. For example, we have what we call why Islam. You may say whatever you want to say about them. Some of us, we talk too much. But when it comes to Walk to walk, there are zero. Why Islam is doing some of those things? Sometimes you're driving, you can see in the highway the sign of why Islam. You think that the kuffar don't try? Let me try. They go, why Islam? That come and they start reading certain things. And so many people accepted Islam through that. So many people accepted Islam through that. But we don't even give them respect. We don't even give them credit. The Muslims, we got some issues in here. We got some issues in here. We going to try our best to pick <laughs> other things. But we, we don't see <laughs> Allah al-Musta'an. We just ask Allah to help the Ummah today. Why Islam, they're doing some of this job. And they're doing a good job. They have a, um, a telephone line 24-7. That if you read something or you heard something about Islam and you want to know, you can just pick your phone and call that particular number 24-7. And someone will pick up the phone and talk to you and give you some of the information that you need. Not only that, they may invite you to come to, you know, their places to get more books, to learn more about Islam. And people are calling, people are Googling, people downloading, people, people are seeking information. Sometimes there are some way that they have no connection with any Muslim community or any Muslim person. But when they go to those lines, they can find what they are looking for. So why Islam is doing some of this job? If we don't want to help them, please don't criticize them. Leave them alone. The so-called authentic Muslims who think that they already got a, a, what we call a ticket to Jannah. Their job is to criticize people every single day. Why Islam is doing some of those jobs. And some dua, some students of knowledge, some sheikhs are doing their best. But they're still criticized by authentic Muslims. Omar Suleiman in Texas, in Ramadan, so many homes, were listening to Omar Suleiman, am I right? Some of you were listening to Omar Suleiman in his YouTube channel. 
with other sheikhs or students of knowledge discussing about different subjects. They're helping people. They're helping people. They're fighting some of those evil that we are talking about through the media. Through the media. And we have some of the students of Nala, some of the du'a. We have Shadid Muhammad in Delaware in Facebook. In Facebook all the time talking about marriage relationship. It's beneficial to some people. You may criticize him, but there are so many people who are benefiting from his talk. Because none of us is, is perfect. Am I right? You criticize him. You're not perfect. And we may talk down upon certain, talk down on certain people, and we find them in Jannah before us. If we don't be very careful, we find them in Jannah before we get there. Shadid Muhammad is doing it, talking about marriages, relationship, helping the Muslim sisters, young Muslim men and women. It's beneficial. You know? Even right here, Masjid as I mean, we're not doing much, but we, we broadcast in the khutbah in Ramadan. And so many people be calling and say, I've been following you guys. I've been following you guys. I've been following you guys. It's beneficial. We cannot fight back this evil except by using the similar means and energy. So our presence, the frequency of using the media in all forms, for dawah must increase by the Muslims. But when we are there, when we are in the media, we have to communicate with people that make sense in the manner that makes sense, in the way that makes sense. We have to communicate with people with certain level that they can understand what we are talking about. They can understand what you are talking about. You can bring them step by step to understand Islam. Some of us don't, 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 don't understand that. Some of, us, some of us not qualified to do that. Some of us not qualified to do that. <laughs> you know, when they are there, you'll be like, oh my goodness. So we have to talk to people, make them to understand us, help them to understand us, Muslims. Because if the way of da'wah become provocation, if the way of da'wah become harassment, like some of us does, the way of da'wah become harassment, if the way of da'wah become downgrading one another, talking down upon one another, if the way of da'wah become like competition among the students of knowledge, among imams and sheikhs, trust me, we are going to fail. We will never, ever be able to become successful in that way. So we have to have the knowledge and we have to understand how to communicate with people. When you are in Facebook, when you are in what we call, um, when you are in YouTube channel, you are communicating with almost 5 billion population of the world, almost. And you, you have to be able to... to <laughs> to approach them certain way that they can understand what you are talking about. But when you are there harassing other Muslims, attacking other Muslims, provoking other dua or imams, or you are there just for competition, 
then we're not going to become successful. This is one of the solution of this problem. This is one of the way that we can and try to fight back this evil, increase our presence in the media, and utilize this principle that Prophet Muhammad has given us. Follow up bad deeds with good ones. If people can always listen to us, guiding them, directing them, teaching them, telling them about the life after death, telling them about patience, telling them about relationship. People listen. We will be able to help so many people. Be iznillah. But the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our ibadat. Barakallahu li'u lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Azim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum mima fi min al-ayat wa dhikr al-hakim wa qul ma qul. Astaghfirullah al-Azim al-Jalila li'u lakum. Wa li sa'iri al-Muslimin min kulli dhambin fa-staghfiruhu innahu huwa al-Qafuru rahim. Brothers, move up and fill up the gaps. Fill up the gaps so people can look like it's going to rain. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillahi bil jabaruti wa sha'ni wal kamal. Khalaqa al khalqa li'abuduh wa bil ilahiyat yufriduh. Wa usalli wa usallimu salatan wa tasliman ala man bu'itha rahmatan lil alameen. Muhammad ibn Abdillah salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi wa ba'd. Brothers and sisters in Islam, <clears throat> you may ask yourself this question. What about our children who become so addicted with social media? This is <clears throat> their life now. This is their generation, generation of social media. And... Um, we have so many children who cannot even, they do not know how to act with people outside anymore. They, they do not know how to interact with, with the community, with the society anymore. They become so addicted with, um, the social media thing. So how are we going to be able to, to help them? <clears throat> well, first of all, we have to understand that this is their generation. That we can do nothing about it. <laughs> the born and these things are available for them. And um, this is part of their education also. In the school system. But what we can do, we can spend time. We have to spend time educating our children self-discipline. Self-discipline. Self-discipline, we have to teach them that. Self-discipline. They may not listen to you. They may not listen to you. You call them to stop. You call them to go to bed. You call them to review and do their homeworks and so on and so forth. They may not listen to you. But if we take our time talking to them about self-discipline and draw some program, daily programs for them, when you wake up in the morning, you pray for you, read some surah, read, you know, some Quran, or read 30 minutes or 20 minutes, read some books for 30 minutes, and then I'll go back to your social media, self-discipline. They may not listen to you, but we have to keep telling them. We have to keep guiding them. We cannot give up. 
Self-discipline. Show them. Self-discipline. Make sure that 9 o'clock you go to sleep. And you explain to them. If you don't sleep this particular time, if you keep, you know, you, uh, you're up with the social media until 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're going to end up destroying your health. You're going to end up destroying your health. Self-discipline. We have to keep talking to them. They're not going to listen. But we have to keep doing it. Because it's the same thing happened to us. Same thing happened to us. We didn't listen. M majority of us didn't listen. But when we grow up, then we start saying, my mother used to tell me, but you wasn't listening. My father used to tell me, but you wasn't listening. But now you got sense enough to understand that now I'm, I have to listen to what my mother used to tell me, what my father used to tell me. That's why we have to keep telling them. Self-discipline. Organize their daily hours for them. I did not tell you that this particular time to that particular time, you have to do this and do that. He or she may not listen. But if you keep telling them, when they reach 30 years old, other responsibility comes. They grow up in what? They become more mature. And they start, oh, my mother used to tell me that this time to this time I have to do this. Then they start organizing themselves. We have to do that. Don't think that you talk unto them. Don't think that you guiding your children, you uh, advising your children every single day has no effect in them. Don't think like that. Because this is part of what we call education. Education don't come one day. Who can raise his hand and say, I'll, I start writing and reading in such, in such particular year or in such and such particular day? Who can raise your hand? None of us know when we start writing and reading. We don't know when we start writing and reading. We don't know when we start to know how to spell some of the word. We don't know. But we find ourselves writing and reading. Why? Because we were, we were going to school every single day. Your teacher, your mother, your father may think that you're not grabbing anything. But, boom, she or he find you reading and writing. This is the way of education in human brain is programmed like that. We keep telling them, we keep telling them, they're going to get it. They're not going to get the time that you wish for them to get it. They may not get it at that particular time, but they're going to get it. Self-discipline. We have to teach them that self-discipline. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our children. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all of us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide all of us. <clears throat> um, this subject, brothers and sisters, we can spend weeks and weeks talking about it. But there are so many things. That this, this is part of our, our, this is part of the oxygen that we breathe now. We, we, can, we cannot survive without that. But, you know, some, some, you see some people driving, then be like, <laughs> they look, they're, they're looking for the phone. <laughs> they're completely disturbed. They cannot even be patient for 10 minutes to stop to find their phone. So this becomes like the oxygen that we breathe now. So if we want to talk about this, this subject, we may spend weeks and weeks talking about it. But we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa <coughs> Lastly, brothers and sisters, inshallah, this month, the 29th of this month, of this month, is going to be Sunday, Sunday morning, 29th of this month. We have the Turkish community coming here for us to spend time um, with each other. We're coming here for Fajr time. 
Fajr time. They're going to come for Fajr with nice Turkish breakfast. I know you like breakfast, you know. So we're going to pray Fajr together, and we're going to have a, a khatira for 20 minutes, 30 minutes khatira talk. And then we're going to have breakfast, <clears throat> and we're going to intermingle, you know, and get to know one another, another talk to one another. We're inviting everybody, brothers and sisters, the 29th of this month, inshallah, Sunday morning. So, you know, strengthen of the brotherhood and the sisterhood between this community and other communities. People want to get to know who you are. They want to get close to you. If we don't get close to one another, we may not be able to understand, you know, we may not be able to understand each other. So inshallah, this is an opportunity for, for us to get to know our Turkish brothers in Wayne, Masjid in Wayne. They're coming here to 29, inshallah. Um, they're going to sponsor the breakfast for you. So inshallah, we are inviting all of you to be here. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our ibadat. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us good in this life, good in the hereafter. Ibad Allah. Inna Allah marakum yamrin bada fi bi nafsi wa thanna ba'da wa malaykati faqala ta'ala. Inna Allah wa malaykatahu yusalluna ala nabi ayu aladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik wa na'im ala abdika wa nabiyika Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma aizal islam wal muslimin. أذل الشرك والمشركين أمر عداك عداء الدين وحمي حوزة الدين وانصر عبادك الموهدين اللهم ارفع عنا الوباء والربا والزنا والزلازل والمحن عنا وعن سائر بلاد المسلمين عامة يا رب العالمين اللهم ألف بين قلوبنا وأصلح ذات بيننا واهدنا سبل السلام واهدنا سبل السلام وجنبنا الفواحش ما ظهر منها وما بطن ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسن وفي الآخرة حسن أقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وإنهاء عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبقاء أعذكم لعلكم تذكرون الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد والله إلى إلى الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للصلاة هيا للفلا قت قامة السلا قت قامة السلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Brothers and sisters, please check your cell phones. Make sure they're off. This is Zakhala Khaim. Stow. Stow. Tighten the ranks up, brothers, like the brother saying. Move forward. Tighten the ranks and the gaps. This is Zakhala Khaim. Stow. Stakimu. Allah Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الطالين آمين إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر 
لَنَفِدَ الْبَحْرُ قَبْلَ أَن تَنْفَدَ كَلِمَاتُ رَبِّي وَلَوْ جِئْنَا بِمِثْلِهِ مَدَدًا قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ يُوحَى إِلَيْ يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الطالين آمين إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سيجعل لهم الرحمن ودا فإنما يسرناه بلسانك لتبشر به المتقين لتبشر به المتقين وتنذر به قوما لدا وكم أهلكنا قبلهم من قرن هل تحس منهم من أحد أو تسمع لهم ركزا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, If you're not uh, staying until Asa, inshallah Please uh, remove your vehicle from the church parking lot and the masjid parking lot but if you are going to stay until Asa, you can leave your vehicle there. And after Asa, please move it immediately. Inshallah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala. Just want to remind everyone that, inshallah, we're still taking people for Umrah trip. So if you have desire to go, you intend to go, inshallah, you can come and see me. Um, <clears throat> people need to remember that every once in a while, they have to visit the house of Allah. You know what I'm saying? You, you can't keep, keep living your life like that. Every once in a while, you have to go ahead and visit the house of Allah, inshallah. All right? That's why we are keeping these things going. Because without that, so many people may not remember to do it. So, inshallah, if you intend to go, come and see me. Um, we are leaving the 8th of February, inshallah, for maybe 10 days. Shukran. Okay, um, you know, we forgot we're going to do quick janaza for a brother, a Muslim brother who passed, but um, his mother, um, who is not Muslim, decided to cremate him. So uh, without um, his choice, without us. So inshallah, we're going to make salat al janaza for him. Stow, <coughs> stop him. Stow. Stow. Stop him. Allah, who Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Please remember to support the masjid. Remember to support the masjid.